What up friends, this video is gonna be about editing your git commits with surgical precision. So only the exact lines of code that you actually want included in your commits are there. My name is Thomas and I make videos about programming. If you wanna stay up to date on the latest things that I'm doing, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified as soon as I go live with new content. As always, there's timestamps in the description below. Check those out so you can just jump to the sections of the video that are most important to you. You're gonna hear people talk about having a clean commit history and I'm not gonna dive too deep into what that means but for me what that means is having focus commits commits that have good messages and commits that are atomic so they don't affect everything in the world they just affect what they're trying to change so why is having a clean git history important in my opinion it's because it makes the code base easier to onboard onto and learn it makes it easier to resolve bugs to debug them and to actually roll back issues when they occur and finally all this gives you confidence in the code base which makes you move faster Getting to this place where you have a clean git commit history is actually not as hard as one would think. I think one of the challenges is that we don't often get to see how people use git, like what their workflow is on a day-to-day -day basis. So what's gonna help us understand how this works is actually exposing ourselves to different styles of modifications that you can make to your code and then how you will go about editing those. So what we'll do in this video is show you the code that you're gonna be changing, how to list those changes as hunks, how to actually start editing them, and then we'll go over what the anatomy of a code change is or a hunk and then finally, we'll actually show you three different example scenarios and how to edit those. So what I've done here is I've set up a small repo called Git Edit Funky Hunks that has examples of these kinds of editing scenarios that you might run into in the real world so you can actually practice on your own. Check out the description below for a link to where this repository of code lives. The first step is gonna be showing you the code changes that have been made, and then I'm gonna show you how we wanna actually break them down. Now, I drive my Git workflow through the terminal. You don't have to do this. You can use a GUI if you want. This is just my workflow for this. So what we're gonna do is start with a Git status. I'm gonna diff them, and then this will show us all the code changes that have been made. When I look at this code, I would say that you could put this all into one commit. And you might think that's okay because there don't seem to be very many code changes and they're all kind of related. So maybe it wouldn't be that confusing for future us or future reader of the code. But what I wanna do is let's pretend I wanna actually break this down into multiple commits. So the commits that I wanna break it down into, and these are the scenarios that we're gonna cover in this video, are this change right here. I wanna break this into two commits. So I want one commit commit to be this change right here where we changed Carol's name to Blythe. That's one commit. And then I want to do another commit where I actually delete the logout screen component because I think that would actually tell a reader or someone reviewing our code a little bit better what change was made. Then if we scroll down here, Another change I want to make is I want this code right here, these design token ads that we've done, I want those to be a commit onto themselves. I want this layout box component to be a commit by itself. And I want the addition of the color pink and the flex uh, display to be a commit on its own. So those are the changes that we're gonna do in this video. So what we're gonna be doing now is showing you how to actually get into interactive mode so we can start editing our changes. And for that we do git add p and then you specify a file name. You don't have to specify a file name or and it'll go through all of the files one by one. But we're gonna say, let's just start with style.css. All right, so if this is the first time that you're actually in an interactive mode like this, if you don't know what to do, you can do question mark and it will list out at the top all of the different commands that you can actually go through. In this case, what we wanna do is we wanted to show how to edit this block of additions. So I'm gonna type S, which stands for split, which is gonna tell Git to make it smaller if it can. As in, can it make the all the changes that are just displayed into a smaller hunk of changes and in this case it can with that let's actually type e which allows us to edit this hunk and then we're going to press enter on that now we're going to actually look at the anatomy of a hunk at the top we have a hunk header which is right here then we have context lines which are here and down here always remember that there could be some down here so keep that in mind and note that spaces do count as context lines and then in between your context lines up here and at the bottom on 22 and 23 you have all of your additions and deletions if you had deletions and they would be here so these are your code modifications let's start then 
All right, now let's go through each one of our three scenarios that we mentioned. This is the first scenario right here, and we're gonna show you how to edit them. I'm gonna start off by doing actually a common mistake that happens when you're editing a git hunk. So let's go here and we would just say, oh, hey, look at the bottom, they have a description and they say, if you want to remove deletions, you just put a space in front of them. The space will essentially turn them into context lines, just like these ones here. Unmodified code, if you can think about it like that. And then you have the plus lines. And if you don't want to include those, you just delete them. So in this case, we said we want this to be what's included in our hunk. So what we would do naturally and this is what i thought too is go through and just delete all of these and i don't really need this one either because i just want this to be a group and i figured that would be good so then we would go and save this file and then it tells us that the patch could not actually be applied so this is easy to miss so it's just down here so now it's going to ask us do you want to actually try that again and in this case i'm going to say yes i do so what we're going to do now is edit the body just like I did before first, but we also have to change the hunk header at the top. Now I haven't actually talked about what the numbers mean and that's kind of important to this whole process. So let's actually scoot over to our style.css file. And you're gonna notice that there are two pairs of numbers at the top. What these two pairs of numbers mean? The first pair is what your code looked like before you made modifications. And the second pair is what your code looks like after you made modifications. The first number in each pair is a line number that corresponds to your code. And the second number that you see here for the first one is five, which is describing what the code used to look like. So it's say starting at line 37, which is right here, let's count down five. And when we count down, we don't include the additions. So one, two, three, skip all the additions, four, five. That's what your code used to look like. And now what it's saying is, we're gonna start at line 37 up here, and we're gonna count down 21. And everything in between the first line and the 21st line is what we're gonna now include in our code change. So when we change the body, we also have to change the header to tell Git how it should add code. So what we'll do now is we'll start by editing the body and then we'll actually edit the hunk header. So in this case here, you'll notice that I have some context lines, which is a closing curly brace and then a space. So because that's the case, I don't need this one and I don't need that one. So we'll just delete everything else as well. And then we add, make sure you add, always have that space there or else it's not a context line. And that should be good. So now what we do is we can count from line one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So from there, we can change 21 to 11. And we can see that that actually worked because we didn't get any error at the bottom. Now, what we can also do is you can press D and that pretty much means like drop out of the active mode. And we can go see that small change that we've made as one possible commit. So I'm gonna clear this up. And now if we do a git status, we see that we have one in our staging area and we'll do a git div dash cached. And you can see that we've now only included this one change. Let's move on to the second scenario. So again, we'll do a git add dash p. And there was another example in the original file style.css. So let's go edit that one. And you don't have to keep on exiting uh, the git add or your interactive patching. The reason why I'm doing it is just to show you the small hunks that we've created as we go along. So now what I want to do is I don't really care so much about this one because I would just add this all in one big uh, commit. I want to deal with this one down here. So we can type S to make this all smaller. No, I do not want to deal with this hunk right now. But yes, I do want to deal with this one. And if you press S, you can see that it doesn't actually get made smaller. So we're going to edit this one. And once again, what we're going to do is start by counting the lines that are here just to familiarize ourselves with this number up here. So remember that this 48 corresponds to 48 over in the code, which was here. So this brings up a question, which is what does it mean when the first numbers are different from one another? And what that means is if the first number is smaller than the second number, that usually means that you made additions 
uh, above this line of code, which pushed this line, which is components right here, it pushed it down. So you'll see that components is now on line 74, which this is saying 72, but the reason why it's 72 is because it's including this white space right here. But the reason why it's so much lower down on the list is because we added all this box code, which we've just ignored till now. So with that, let's start counting and just see what the context looks like. So remember white space count. So we start on line three and we do one, two, three, four, five, six. And we are actually including uh, this deletion right here because again, remember we're counting the first pair. So that's seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, cool. So we understand what the context is. Now let's actually make the code modification. In this case, what I wanna show you how to do is let's say we wanna make the additions on their own and then we want to make the deletion separate so let's go ahead and do that to make the deletion separate if we look down at the bottom here it says we just have to remove the minus sign and then add a space just like we did that like that and you'll notice what that does is essentially just turn it into context it just said that code that i changed make it look like it's unchanged to get so now we just have our additions and no more deletions. So now we can do start counting again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So instead of 11, we want to make it 12. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll see if it worked by doing a git diff cached. And we can see that only our additions have been added. Let's move on to the third scenario. So this time we don't have any more scenarios in our style.css because we've actually broken down everything exactly as we wanted. So let's do a git add dash p for app.cljs. And this is going to be the last scenario. So we'll go ahead and edit this file. So in this example, you're actually gonna see that there are context lines at the beginning, but there are no context lines at the end. That just happens to be the case for this particular edit. So that's what I meant earlier when you won't always have a context line in the beginning and in the end. What we wanna do in this hunk is split up the two changes that were made. We renamed Carol to Blythe, and then we deleted the logout screen. Those are two separate actions. Let's just split them up. So what we'll do here is I'm gonna to go to the bottom and I'm gonna say, copy this line right here, go up here, and we will paste it here. And then what I wanna do is I wanna change all these deletions to just be ignored by Git. So we'll take that minus and space in front of it, space for all of these. And we don't actually need this one right here. So now what we're gonna do is we have to modify the second pair of numbers by counting how many lines we actually need to include. So what we wanna do now is count out the context line so we can change the hunk headers. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go up here and change the four to a 10. And then we can just save this and we see that everything should have worked, but let's just confirm by doing a if cached and we can see that all we changed there was the name Carol to Blythe. As you can see, this is a super powerful approach to actually controlling what your commits look like. And it really does give you a little more insight into how Git does what it does. If you found the video helpful, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, I'll see you all next time.